Go. We should totally have an intro song. We should have an intro song. We should steal yeah. Staten's intro song. That's what we should really do. Can you sing, it's, sing, sing just along? Just to peel that open in 30 seconds while there's no one on. Do, 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 do. I can't remember the words. Yeah. Something about America, born in America. Yeah, I can't remember. Poor in America. That's it. The, let's see. Uh, right, we are officially live. Um, so as we, as we normally do, um, we'll let people filter in because Stips had a barrage of text messages saying, where the fuck are you? Hurry up. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. Um, the joys of trying to sort pictures out and, and all that jazz. So hello everyone. If there's anybody here yeah, there are a few people here. So if you're in the chat, say hello. Um, it's very nice. It's, uh, it's, an alternative to the Tuesday, the Tuesday night, it is Tuesday night. We normally do a Saturday or a Sunday, so a Tuesday night is a bit of a, a bit of a new one for me. So Darren Gibbings, hello, how are you? How are you doing? Um, yeah, there's a couple of people filtering in, so we'll we, we just give it. Oh, I've got a notification minutes. there for community standards. You've got a notification for community standards. Yeah. What do you mean? Uh, it says we shouldn't bully each other. So. Oh, okay, again. right. Whatever you do. Look Why the fuck you. have we got subtitles? Sub, you, you can turn them off. Oh, really? But, yeah. But I'm, I'm not pressing any more buttons. I, I would suggest turning them off, Stip, because all it will say is in, uh, <laughs> uncomprehensible Geordie, uncomprehensible Geordie. <laughs> Wait till we get Jack on. Wait till we get you on. Um, Daniel Toon, Wagwan, hello, how the devil are you? John Snow, how the devil are you? Uh, who else have we missed? Jimmy, hello. Lots of people. Hello. Mm. Nice to see you. Um and, you know, I'm I'm gonna kind of crack on. Uh step keep an eye on the uh, on the chat and if I miss anything, yeah, yeah. Um tell me that I've missed something. So what I'm doing currently is opening up the the agenda. It feels like a proper meeting. It feels like being at work. We're definitely not at work. So where's my agenda gone? There were there were there are a few things that we're going to discuss this evening. So hello everybody. Um, I'm sure you can probably imagine what most of those things are. At least for me, um, is camouflage and it's um, it's different variations and the way different people do it and a new person. Um, so we're going to have a, a chat about that. We're going to have a chat this evening about value. And value, one thing I want to make very clear from the start is value doesn't necessarily mean cheap. So um, we will we will discuss that. Um, so yeah, one, bear in mind, value doesn't always mean cheap. Um, but we've got some... some, some doesn't good. Tesco. <laughs> we're not Tesco. I wish I was, but I haven't got that much money yet. So... Um, mm. So, Leona, hello. I'm a tad quiet. How am I quiet? How is this? A thing? You're not. You're not. Well, according mostly. to Dan Toon, I am. And and let's let me just bump this audio uh, mic. You're a tad quiet, Andy. Yeah, I'm just. Well, my audio. I'm hearing you really well. Although I do have my laptop set at seventy-five percent, which is above again up again. average. How's that? There we go. Now, oh god, that's too much. Right. Thank you, Daniel. You're a gentleman. Um, so, you are, for those of you watching, you are normally used to, to Stip and me, and maybe not the face that's, that's to that side of me. <laughs> here, here, here's, a, here's a sniper we created earlier. Um, you, you probably know him considerably better than you know the two of us, because you've got many thousands of people on YouTube. So, um, Mr. Staten, to, to give us the who, what, when, where, why and how of AKA Staten in five minutes or less, go. Okay, so my name is Staten. Uh, I am based in Northern Ireland. I'm very old. I'm 39 years old. Um, that is old. Although I look oh. about 23. <laughs> no, you look 49. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, 46. <laughs> I'm, getting my bus, I'm getting my bus pass next year. I'm really excited. Like it. Um, so, uh, yeah, I've been airsofting for about 10 years. 
I went with a stag do to an indoor CQB area and really enjoyed it. Went back maybe a few months later and enjoyed it a wee bit more and thought, flip, I might do this regularly. Mm -hmm. So um, I did whatever every airsofter does and says my first gun is going to be a sniper rifle <laughs> because I'm fucking cool. Yeah. And sniper rifles are fucking cool and snipers are fucking cool. Yeah. And uh, I've always been into the outdoors and I've always been into sharpshooting. So my first CQB weapon was an M24 bolt action sniper rifle. Um, a CQB? An yeah. So, and it was about 17 <laughs> feet long with a suppressor. But uh, I, I ran that for like the guts of like a year, year and a half doing CQB. That must have been um, really hard work. I don't know, because I didn't really start my career any other way. So it's hard to okay. compare it. Um, I did switch to a P90 um, just because uh, a friend who owns an airsoft shop said that it came back and it was stuck on full auto and um, he would sell it cheap. So I bought that and ran it in CQB. But just um, this was my safety right here and this was my semi. So I literally just did single shots with the old finger. Um, and after that, I got a AEP block. Okay. And ran about kind of L-shaped, <laughs> picking up objectives and things like that. Like it. And then I started watching YouTube and I seen Scout the Doggy. Oh, yeah. And there was also a guy called Van Van, who was possibly the first person that stuck a he is the ogest of the og 10 years ago those videos the vavam videos yeah. and, I, and i think he only released about six videos there weren't, yeah there weren't many um, i watched them back to back and i seen him in a ghillie suit and um being a videographer and photographer everybody was just like you should do that and i said nah i'm okay thanks so but i did like the idea of going outside as opposed to cqb and thought a sniper rifle would do well outside as opposed to a pallet wall maze thing. So, yeah, yeah eventually went outside and went, my mind was blown. I was just like, what is this phenomenon? Like, this is mad. Um, so kept a sniper rifle, started making a ghillie, made a ghillie, already had the kind of get up and go pace of a CQB ear with a sniper rifle. So it was a bit of a, a kind of amalgamate. So what I tend to do is I run as fast as I can at the start of every game. Or, okay. And I try to get in the objective as quickly as possible or in the enemy's base, depending on what I'm told in my ear to do. Mm -hmm. um, and I also played a game called Delta Force. I don't know. This is really showing the age. But there was a game called Delta Force, I think I and you could throw on a ghillie suit and get a silenced MP5, and online, that's all yeah. I did. Ghillie suit and an MP5 or a silenced sniper rifle, and uh, that was me, as happy as a pig and shit. <laughs> and so eventually that translated to real life, and I was ghillie sniping for many, many years, and then I took a break. And um, because Evo Athena, my partner, and I were having kids. And so I quit for about a year and a half and put all my stuff up for sale, sold my beloved VSR. Sorry, Stip. And uh, eventually a friend who was a worship leader in a, in a church, and that's how I knew him from a church family, mm -hmm. like whenever they all went. And... Um, he texted me out of the blue saying, hi, can I buy your airsoft stuff? And I thought, flip me. Here's a church leader wanting my stuff. Yeah, what do you want it for? And he says, oh, we play airsoft now. I was like, yeah. oh, cool. And he says, you'll have to come back out. And so I was like, yeah, all right, I'll come back out. And he says, so can you sell me the gear? And I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> so I dropped it and uh, started up again. Yeah. He, he should have stopped talking. <laughs> so he kick-started me. Um, Evo Athena uh, was pregnant and only got out once before pregnancy and got quite down the dumps at about six months in. Um, 
time she was yeah. obviously beautifully big but couldn't move much and wanted to go out air so often so i i bought her an hpa evo um because she yeah. that's what she uh really liked whenever she was out air so often um and so that gave her a bit of a goal to get to so that's how she came up with her name evo evo athena mm -hmm. and the goddess of war obviously and then i got back into it and got an ari striker and okay. pimped it out to the max and it was the kneecapper version so as small oh, as possible well, i suppose you want you're um, a jewel aren't you so yeah yeah um so it wasn't very overpowered or anything and the cylinder was fine and then uh, being self-employed in the live events industry, COVID happened and I didn't have much to do other than create airsoft content. So I did that. Um, I actually put up my first video about two months before lockdown and then lockdown happened and that's all I did then. Um, and I've been here ever since. Good stuff. That's me. Ta-da! And there you were, and now, and now you, you sat here as, as yeah, nice to see you. Thanks for coming. <laughs> if you could just leave that nice, uh, that nice background up for a while, that'd be good. I, I do like that. It's very, it's very swanky. I, I'm, yeah, my, mine's not quite as swanky, but there we go. This is life. Um, I, see. I like the way you've you've chosen a green screen, but you've chosen a patio to be your green screen background. <laughs> you know that, that this is this. These are the lengths that I go to for a live show. You know. In the background, you actually see loads of tigers and cocaine in the background, so he has the green screen it out to look like a patio. This is it, yeah. That's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah, this is... Um, yeah, that is to exactly... make it look it. like you can afford glass and windows. <laughs> We're allowed to go outside here, Stip, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, thank you very much for the overview. Um, I, I imagine that a significant chunk of the people... Um, know who you are, but um, I don't think I, I'd certainly not heard the story from from beginning to to where we are now. So um, yeah, cheers. We Did you ever buy the VSR back again? Good point. Uh, so I actually bought a second VSR, and that's a spirit. It was dirt, dirt cheap. It was maybe about a hundred pounds. Um, so I went to flip who what do you call the Czech company? Airsoft Pro, is it? Are they Czech yeah. company? Yeah. Um so yeah, I loaded it up with like I remember was it Gilly Sniper Forum or something? And there was yeah. no Facebook back then. There was just yeah. like forums of people saying this like black art of sniping and you need to use this and you need to use that. And then someone said has anybody seen the Red Action Army Chamber? And it was just like, what the hell? And so trying to get one of them was like hen's teeth. Yeah. So eventually one came up and I, I got that. And um, yeah, it worked really well. At one duel, it worked well. I, I think over the last, I, I've talked about it before, but over the last, so I've been playing since 2006 on and off. Um, and, and back then, you know, you just you just couldn't buy any. It was Laylax. You could buy Laylax. You could buy um, oh shit. Airsoft Pro. No, not even Airsoft Pro. What was the other company in Japan? And you had to order direct from Japan. Um, oh my god, PDI, PDI, PDI. Yeah, bore yeah. ups and, and all that jazz. Mm -hmm. And that was it. But it was mega expensive. And ammo was just absolute crap. And yeah, and everything was just DIY. Absolutely everything was, was DIY. What was the heaviest weight of ammo you could use back then? Two nines were probably so Super Grand Masters were, were were the thing that people used and but they were like twenty P a, a round. It was they were ri they came in this little this little square box, like a like an ammo like a a, 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 a real steel ammo box. Mm -hmm. And then they were in like these little sheets. Oh they they were what they compared to now, I don't know. But then you you went to Madball Tans. There were some of the they were like Dig Digicon made some that were maybe a three two, but they were like they were Teflon coated. So as soon as you put anything through a hop up, your hop up was just trashed after about fifty BBs. It was ridiculous. So it was you know it was at least you had a choice of weights. Yeah, it, back it, when it, I started. 
1994. Um, the gun was just the gun. There was no upgrades or anything. Yeah. No hop ups. I'm, I'm no, there was hop. There was hop. But only just. Yeah. Did you have such a thing as power limits back then? Yeah, we. To be honest, we didn't even have sights. I just used to play my cousin's garden, but yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it was definitely. So I came in and in around the Violent Crime Reduction Act. See, I'm assuming you. Now you're Southern Ireland, aren't you? Northern. How are you? Oh, sorry. Um, so yeah, Violent Crime Reduction Act. That was that was the time I. Mm. Kind of came into it all. So yeah, there were the hope that they weren't legal limits per se. Um, but the the Home Office or somebody had done a piece of testing and they basically said that 2.32 joules was lethal. So a lethally barreled firearm was was a th- that was that was the distinction between the two was that two over 2.3 joules was lethally barreled. So it then became a Section Five firearm and you so that that it was kind of in a, a roundabout way that it was it was 2.3 when I started. So. And it's always been that. That, although I say that, you know, it was five hundred FPS. People didn't really understand. Dual, nobody talked about dual creep back then at all. It just didn't happen really. So maybe the odd, the odd two, but it, you know, it wasn't fairly common knowledge like it is now. So, yeah. A more recent history there. Comment from uh, Darren Gibbons. When COVID hit, I found Staten browsing YouTube on tips to craft my Viper rig. Been hooked on the channel since. There you go. COVID was an interesting time for all of us. Uh, Darren Gibbons. Do you know, my live chat like appeared there. So it must have been Darren that chatted, but it then disappeared. Yeah. So I can't see these comments, if there is comments coming through. So apologies. Okay. But thank you, Darren. I think COVID was a time when we all had to find something to do, didn't we? Yeah. I mean, it was kind of the birth of, doing this. It was the birth of this, yeah, wasn't it, really? Mm. That's when we, we started to do them pretty much weekly, didn't we? We'd sat in the house for a week getting paid to be off work and it seemed great but then we had to find something to fill the time didn't we I wish I I've got a question way. for Stan while I'm here go on what, go- what guns do you have what do you use uh, sniper wise uh, not interested in your pallet stuff not interested in what sorry your, your pallet stuff for your indoor stuff uh, well I use everything outside I very rarely go to a CQB so I have I'm just looking around to see what there is. There's an MTW Reaper M, so it's a single shot mechanical MTW. Um, I've owned that for about nine months and used it twice. Um, Norbert SSR4 is here. I used that for a couple of milsims. I've used it twice. The AAP Carbine, I've used that um, about three times. The TAC41 is my main go-to at the minute. Um, the SRS, and I think that's it. I think that's it. I've got yeah, like I've got an MK23. Obviously I was going to say I've got an MK. And AAP and SSP18 and an SSP5. Um, and that is it, I think. It's probably something else. Evo Athena has a HPA Evo, obviously, and an SSG2. Going full Novich in your house. Yeah, well, it was kind of strange because Novich approached us to work with them and be affiliates and review products and all. And I kind of thought it was a wee bit weird because I kind of thought, flip, I don't have any Novich products <laughs> at all. Um, but, uh, yeah, we, we SSG10 was a black market or a Black Friday deal. Of like, okay. I don't know, was it like 200 quid or something on Black they, Friday? They were st- incredibly cheap. I remember having a chat with, with you, Stip, and maybe Jordan back in the day and going, oh, SSGs, oh, they're too expensive. And then somebody said they're like 200 quid. I was like, wow. Yeah. That's... So um, I think I still have my short Action Army cylinder, twisted cylinder. Um, so whenever it arrived, we switched the bucking from 60 down to 50. Change the spring. Uh, can't remember if I changed the barrel. Might have changed the barrel, but definitely changed the outer barrel for a shorter one. And um, it's just way too long. And that was about it, I think. But, I do think we're getting to the point now where the, the guns are well built enough that 
you just need to swap a couple of parts out. There's plenty of upgrade parts available, and you can get something that performs well and easily. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everything. The problem with airsoft is tolerances. Yeah. Um, yeah. That is it. Um, if you're a good enough mechanic, you'll work that out. I've had so many people say this gun's a lemon. It's just shit, and it's not. Um, yeah. Because you your stocks you going that way, your barrels going that way, and and it all well, does if this. You, if you're able to diagnose enough. Um, like the, for some reason, someone's TAC 41 just wasn't hopping BBs. And I was just like, how, how is that possible? Like mine shoots absolutely brilliant. And, you know, my first video, I didn't do a thing to it. And the BBs were just going really far, really straight, um, every time. And it was hard to miss with it. And someone else's just wasn't hopping BBs. So they said that it was a lemon. They're just fed up. It's a lemon. It's shit. And... Eventually, I met up with the person and brought a few items with me, but I brought my calipers and I measured the, the nubs, and actually, his nub was slightly shorter than my nub. Now, uh -huh. in nubs, they measure them in micro millimeters, so it's like a wee weird UEM, and those micro millimeters of differences is like a big difference in hop distance. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, a BB jams with one mil of hop in it, maybe. So you have to divide that up into whatever it is. So um, a quick knob change for him solved that problem. Um, mm -hmm. So I know that the famous thing, like Evo Athena runs Skirm Shop UK and a lot of emails would come in saying, this here's not working and this here's broke. And you, you question them and it's like, I've been doing airsoft in three years. I've been doing airsoft in eight years. I know how to attack a gun. And my instant reaction in my head is to go, well, if you're the mechanic, it's like coming to a car. You're, you're a car mechanic and you're coming to uh, a car, another car mechanics to go, hey, this gearbox won't install properly. And it's just like, well, you're the mechanic. You, you sort it out if you're that good. But just because you can tighten an Allen bolt to where that Allen bolt goes doesn't mean that you're good at problem solving or diagnosing. And it's whenever you diagnose the, sol the problem, you tend to find the solution fairly quickly. You yeah. know? I think this, so, this is where we've, we've come to Facebook and, and Instagram these days. It's all sales and adverts. But to go back to your, your airsoft sniper forum days, all the answers were there. The understanding was there. You, know, you could tech. You could learn to tech from that. Whereas now, it's more... Your gun's a lemon, go and buy a new gun. A whole new gun. And that's where we're at as a community. Society's moved There's the on. holy grail phrase at the minute, out of the box. And yeah, nothing's good out of the box. If a thousand... Well, the problem is, you know, it could be 10% of them are really fucking good out of the box, or 40% mm. of them are... There's some sort of thing where all the tolerances will be great and it'll just work. Um, I think I've been fairly lucky with my TAC 41 because I've genuinely not had an issue with it. Um, whereas other people are, you know, having problems. Um, but most people don't have the time, but do you have the money? Like, you know, if yeah. it, you're working a 60 hour job or 60 hour week job, you just want to buy something and go airsoft on the weekend, you know? So I don't know. I think, uh, uh, you know, jobs. Jobs have always been quite long and arduous, but I think it's it's people putting the effort in. I think that's changed a lot because a lot of companies now do offer what they call out of the box solutions. It's the same with ghillie suits as well. You know, here's an instant ghillie suit. You'll you'll turn invisible as soon as you rock up in that. And people don't seem to be willing to try and further themselves or, or to learn any sort of part of that now. Mm. Well, I'm moving on. Then. I was going to say on on on, on just, that is a perfect me. segue into into the, the the main topic of conversation that I wanted to go through this evening at least. Um, so, starting over the, the some weeks, tell me how many in a minute. But I've seen you've been doing some stuff with a particular pair of DPM trousers, and I think you might have them on the rail behind you. Is that right? Ta-da! I bet you can see them. 
pick them up because they're not well camouflaged <laughs> against your so, really nice lit sign. Yeah, I like it. Um, so yeah, the the thing about DPM is for me, right? So I'm not. Before we start this, I'm not a camo expert by any means. Um, one of the things that I am really good at is colors. Um, being a video edit, um, I've been asked to do lots of jobs where a video edit comes in and I have to color correct it exactly how it is. Yeah. So I know how colors work. I know how to mix colors and things like that. Um, but other than that, you guys are probably going to hang your heads and go, what the fuck is he talking about? <laughs> so, no. um, uh, yeah, DPM for me. Um, and I think I was maybe chatting to Step about this. If you imagine um, your very old TV, if you're that old, and you used to be able to go up to the screen and you'd see a little red light and a yeah. little green and a little blue, your red, green, blue. But as soon as you start to come away, you start to see like someone's head or the color of someone's skin and then the color of their hair. And it changed the, the more you came back. So... I quite like macro patterns. Mm -hmm. um, for me, they are what ditch the shape. Um, and I know, I know this is the DPM, but like this is the side of my uh, green leaf suit, which I've inked. And there's nothing really on the front because I tend to wear a chest rig. Mm -hmm. But on the, the sides, I have these big, massive patches of brown. Um, my kind of philosophy there is if your colors aren't exactly the same as your background, you're going to be a silhouette of that one color. Um, so to show another example, this, uh, this doesn't have any macro patterns on it. It's got little splashes of green. So for me, uh, whenever I come away more than 15 meters, you won't see that green that green will blend into the brown and it'll just look silhouetted. Um, so what I sometimes do is get a bit of chalk and I draw like okay. South America on my suit and I go, right, it's a brown base, so I'm going to make that bit green. And now, now I'm going to draw Ireland over here and I try to do these big, massive patches. Okay. And the idea then is if I'm wearing uh, the like a green suit with a green background, if my green is slightly off, which it most likely is, because you'll never match the background completely, mm -hmm. my philosophy is if I take away this bit to be brown and the person stands back 20 meters, eventually they will see something like that. Yeah. Um, likewise, if I take away half of my head and this shoulder line, that'll then sink down. Um, and that's how I kind of work. Um, so DPM, disruptive pattern i think disruptive pattern disruptive pattern material material there you go um it's got these quite big macro uh patterns maybe bring it slightly closer um so that was the first thing i kind of like about dpm second thing is the colors are actually quite good um i was chatting to le covert and he doesn't like this um kind of gray mustard whatever you call that color. Um, um, and so these arrived, went on eBay and got them for 10 pounds um, because the other reason, and uh, unfortunately we can't get the photos working, but here in Ireland over the winter, there's like these dark, dark mud browns and these bright orange leaves and these dull dark greens. So it kind of, it kind of works quite a bit. Um, so what I did was I bought a pair of these, 10 pounds, off eBay or possibly in any of your local surplus stores. They're pretty easy to get. Um, I then went out to the forest and set them down, had a look at them and took a step away. And suddenly it was just like, wow, actually these, these may work really well. The next thing I did was I picked up all the orange leaves and scattered them around uh, the trousers. And what I do is I put the trouser legs down and spread them apart and I cover one in like little patches of orange leaves and I look at the other and I see the progress between the two, totally natural and with a bit of nature added. Now with nature, 
it tends to be this one will always win. Mm -hmm. But if I'm handcrafting, sometimes my crafting is worse than the original. So I then know to backtrack a bit. So one of the things that uh, didn't work with me was I instantly thought, right, well, let's try and follow the black pattern and okay. put some cable ties on the black pattern. And I started crafting uh, possibly back at the house and just added a bit of cottons to maybe like, um, I think you might be able to see it. I think I got that far down. And as you can see, even though I only did a few cable ties, the DPM is suddenly covered. I can't see any original pattern at mm -hmm. all. But I spent ages adding the cable ties and then realized that I had way too much. So I started, went back down to the forest and realized this. So I started ditching loads of cable ties and just putting on the, the rest of the colors. And um, so here you can see where it's kind of bare compared to up here where it's kind of solid. Mm -hmm. So you're getting loads of DPM colors through and loads of gaps through. And um, yeah, it started really working. Um, the other thing that uh, is quite good about leaving lots of space in between your patterns is these tend to be made by high-end professional camouflage people, and I'm not. So I'd rather put my trust in their base than my whatever you call it, balaclava over the top of it, which doesn't make sense. And the other thing is uh, loads of this here stuff is mill spec. So even though these are like maybe 30 years old, 20 years old, it'll still have good IR properties. So um, yeah, I'll definitely be a fan of using these for mill sims and in night games. Um, Just while you've got them out there. Sorry. Um, yep. Is it cotton that you've put on there? Is it just cotton? So uh, this is actually Le Coubert's Oakland or Oak Garland, sorry. So there's some new colors, which are really, really tasty. Um, that's kind of quite a brightish orange brown, kind of like a copper or a rust color. Mm -hmm. um, just moving on slightly, you have a different kind of more chocolatey rust color. Um, you've got the typical grays and I think that's the other type of color, which is the darker brown. Um, I mean, the, the so, nano screen's a, a fantastic fabric and it has some great properties reflecting light. But if you were just starting out in airsoft, right, say so you pick these trousers up for, for £10 on eBay, it wouldn't cost you a lot to get some cotton to dye it to get that same effect, as long as you understand the pattern, the color, and the control of that. And like you say, not putting too much stuff on. Yeah, um, so there are some samples here, which I magically made, and um, they're quite close to yeah. kind of look that uh, Le Covert's kind of already gone. So just so you know, Le Covert's stuff is what, maybe, I don't know, 40 quid a pack. Yeah. Um, but uh, the thing about the Le Covert pack compared to some other like kind of cotton packs is I actually cut the nano screen really, really thin. Um, if I had, I've actually got some here. So with all laser cut, these oak glands are, yeah. are oak garlands are all very, yeah. very um, well done, laser cut and everything. Um, what I tend to do is literally only use that amount there, roughly. Um, so I'm using maybe, I don't know, two centimeters of width, but I'm using the full length. Um, and that's a tiny, tiny piece that you get in. So for the, that's the other thing. I've seen people use lots and lots of cotton, almost like the size of my hand, cable tied. Yeah. And, um, I don't know how, it's just not my pe personal preference. I don't feel that it's kind of worked for me in the past. It I depends on your local environment because when I've been building mine, I started out in my local woodland and the, the leaf shapes were quite big. So I did quite big cotton pieces. As soon as I got down to the airsoft site, 
it's all very small leaves. So I had a chat with Lakova and he recommended smaller patterns and smaller shapes for, for any environment would fit in better than even so what you're what he was saying was even in the area with the large leaves, he still uses the small It works. Leaves. Yeah. Well, I think the reason yeah, for me it kind of makes sense because like, uh, I wish, well, I'll try and do this on a piece of paper, right? Um, but l this is a question that was maybe a keyword during lockdown that you've seen. Sorry. So if I draw, and you can let me know, can you see that all right? Yeah. So uh, say this is the bust of a human shape. What I seen was people pretty much covering leaves out to here. which just meant them meant that it looked like a larger version of themselves. There was no distortment in shape. Whereas what I was kind of talking about was if I took away that section and took away, oh, the pens ran out, but I took away that section of color, you know, you, that's how I start to disrupt the look. Um, yeah. Because people's eyes aren't clever enough to work out majority of the time hey no that's that's actually still uh, a semicircle yeah. head you know um, and that's where the kind of the illusions come in um, with those big macro patterns so i would you know have bits maybe depth wise here but then nothing for like two feet and then maybe another bit um, and yeah. whereas you do get to see people like crafting out to here but the whole way around so they're just making like a what do you call the Ghostbusters? The Mr. Marshmallow oh, Man? Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah. It's, kind of... it's those silk leaves, isn't it? Like people put thousands and thousands of, of leaves on top of a leaf suit. And yeah, it's the same effect. It's, it's the same outline because you've not broken it up. But I yeah. think a lot of that is, um, it's macro pattern as well. If you can work within your macro, that's breaking your shape up and you just enhance that with 3D. You don't necessarily need to use the 3D to create the breakup. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and the other thing, uh, a, a lot of people, maybe just touching on the leaves, um, I did have some here. There, oh, there's one that's fallen off. So uh, your man, Mr. Norwich, the team at Norwich and Doug and all, the camo guys and all, they started introducing these, you know, these leaves that were kind of, kind of, I don't know, the the son of sneaky leaves almost. Like there was nothing else. You went from sneaky leaves to nothing for many years. So he started releasing these leaves and see him again. People would buy a pack because I, I think you get like 50. You get a good number or like 20 quid or whatever it is. So you do get a good number. But the problem is people were using the, them all around, which just made that bulkier size. Um, so... I don't actually use them at that size. Um, I don't know if I've, I've got my boonie somewhere, which I've got an example of it. So no, I've got too much stuff. But basically, I actually peel the fabric off. Um, so this is another way. If you've got loads of these Norwich leaves and uh, you don't want them, just peel the silk off. Because one, the stems tend to break after a while and they aren't as robust as anything. Um, so your stems will break and you'll lose them, that's them gone. Um, so if you peel the leaves off, you've then got like a fairly nice colored fabric. Like, mm. um, it's not too bad, uh, a color for, um, the particular season. And I know he's, Doug uses a method called Pantone. Mm. Um, Pantone is the international like language of color. Yep. So if Dag says picks up a leaf and goes down his pant pantone pantone uh color swatch and goes right that's the color of that leaf and um, so we'll mix that color with a wee bit of that color and that's how we'll get that kind of breakup um he then sends that away to a printer or the maker who then prints that pantone color and they know to match that color so the the leaves are gen generally quite good color but um the shape of them and things like that i don't particularly like but what I sometimes do is take that and cable tie it, and suddenly you've got a nice, a nice thing. Mm -hmm. You can do what I do with the covert. 
and snip a section off and cable tie it that way. Um, if you put it, a slice, sorry, go ahead, Stu. I was going to say, um, I was actually sat with my kids watching one of your videos before we came on here, um, and you were showing off the original sneaky leaves, and you were holding it in your hand on the, the stem. And one thing we noticed was when you were holding it in your hand, the hand was just moving slightly as it does, but because it's on a stem, they wave, and because mm -hmm. it's a sharp edge, it's visible. So if you're yeah. out there and you're moving quite slowly, these leaves are just springing up and down and creating far too much movement, which will give you away. Yeah. But if you zip tie them onto your clothing, yeah, so it's what, smaller what, and it's stable. So what Step is saying is if it's on a leaf, or sorry, a stem, it'll look like yeah. that as you move. Whereas this one, that I've cable tied, yeah. So that's a very mm. good point. I've never actually thought about that. I guess it may work in the opposite if it's a very windy day, maybe, and you're in some branchy mm. shrubbery, you may stay static, whereas the background may start moving. But um, like, yeah, absolutely right. Um, the other thing that you can do with these leaves, so I've taken a wee strip off it off, but the other thing that I quite like to do to get um, a good shape is fold the leaf in half, put a slice in it, and then you've got a wee slice in there. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. And then fold one end over into the other. Yeah, and now suddenly you've got like a, a real four leaf clover type shape. And that'll cable tie the same as any other thing. But suddenly you've got a different type of shape, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and it saves you. That way is very quick because it saves you snipping down to this size because it's kind of now. Yeah. That's smart. That's what it Never seen that before. That's, um, that's does anyone good. have a sneaky leaf handy, or or similar? No, I bend mine ages ago. Yeah. So to go from that kind of size of leaf, which is a huge macro on your suit, to kind of that smart, I like is that. way better. So uh, yeah, I quite like his leaves. Even checking out the the colours, they are pretty. These are the cottons that I use. So they are very, very similar. So this is the Norwich team's one that they picked out. And this is the cotton that I picked out. So it's very, very similar. It's, it's got a nice one. texture to it, to it as well, the Norwich one there. Yeah. So is my it, eyes... It's plastic, isn't it? Like a plastic material. Uh, I think it's like that Polyester. silky plastic. Yeah. yeah. It's some um, kind of polycotton, I imagine. Or maybe mm. just a straight polyester. So I think he presses them, does it, to get the shape in the, the way that yeah, Staten's got I'd it there. So. Mm. That'll be done like that, just to get that crump, crumpled, crumpled yeah. look to it. So yeah, I, I quite like them. Um, I actually use very little of them. So I, if I bought a pack, I would maybe use like, I don't know, like I guess it depends on your needs, but I'd maybe use about 10 stems max. Um, ten. Ten used in my whole suit. You've got ten, yeah. So Jackal's here, and he's got he bought a pack, and he's only used ten stems, if even using the stems. I don't know. Um, so I guess it's it's whatever your needs are. But if you've yeah, just money saving. Um, mm -hmm. if you don't want to go out to a fabric company and or a fabric shop and try and bring a pocket of leaves with you, yeah. the Norwich leaves are actually quite good color. It's just the how they're made i just don't like but if you do that simple snip and twist it inside itself you will get a fairly nice shape mm. so um, yeah. yeah if you're um but uh the garlands i can't remember how much they are they're probably about 40 or 50 quid but there is a ton of material and if you use them like you normally see cotton it's being used where it's like a few inches long you'll maybe go through them quite quickly and maybe only get a bust done but i think the idea is the, like this is the covert suit himself and even he has only used like maybe a, a centimeter slither cutting of each one so but that one you've got there that is that the covert's oak master base yep it is indeed um, and is that one that he himself has crafted with his own hand? 
Uh, it's either him or Dama, maybe, or whatever you call that guy. That's very interesting to look at then. I would imagine it's probably Thema. He seems to look over it seems to deal in the base materials rather than the um than the end product. I think he does do some end products, but I mm. I don't think it uh, ever sees light of day for us. That's yeah, interesting. Raffia's dirt cheap and there's even bits of wool which I've never really used as well. Um, it's interesting I've, that he's put them in a bundle like that. Yeah, little bits of coconut rope. Mm. I guess uh, the idea there is that the that's the way grass normally grows. Normally there's one stem, but then it grows out to be like 40 yeah. stems, but it's all from the one root. Um, so maybe that's I mean, the I, theory. I'm not going to question it. You know, it is. <laughs> well, it's always Wait. good to question everybody. I mean, you notice the, 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 the distinct lack of, of, I say, in a positive sense it's not thick of 3d mm. some certainly something i've learned over the last five years or so is that yeah you, you don't need like you say Stan. you know this this kind of look over it says let the, the let the camo breathe um yeah have so, you got yeah. any um pictures handy did i send you a couple me yeah can we get them on yeah hold on Technical problems. One of Dan uh, stood there. Let me just so Dan get, Dan gets a shout out. Find it. Hold on. Yep. Here we go. Right. The picture of Dan is currently live. The one Actually, of I've got um, got all the stands there with the uh, the DPM trousers in there. Yeah. Um, just to introduce Dan's project here. Um, it's Cryptek trousers that he's added color to with spray paint. He's got very little 3D on there, but it's enough because the pattern creates a depth as well. Yeah. Um, I just think it's really well done. It's yeah. it's not complicated to to make a ghillie suit. And that's something we'll we'll touch on later. <laughs> Stay alive. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, do you know that's the that's the funny thing. Like, so Norbert sent me out the what do you call it? the fuck do you call it? Coid solar. His yeah. kind of camo. So Coit Solar was developed by Dag, um, and he, there's a few really interesting things. Um, he's obviously ex-military and an ex-military tailor. Um, so he's got a wealth of knowledge. Um, but uh, there was this idea of what's fashionable as well. Uh, so some people do ask in the Gilly Crafters group, you know, what should I start with? And one of my first questions is always, are you wanting it to look good or are you wanting it to be functional? Because some people just want the modern warfare almost net over the head, you know, yeah. cool Viper Hood DMR look, um, which is okay for Airsoft because it's like a cosplay type sport or activity. So... Um, uh, it may not be functional, but Dag actually picked the um, coach order to be similar to uh, the, what do you call it? Tiger Stripes. Strike. Um, and the reason for that is because different camos come into fashion, whereas the Tiger Stripes has always been like fashionable for people. People always go, oh, that's kind of cool. So he kind of went, yeah, I quite like Tiger, Tiger Stripe, so I'm going to like base mine off that. So um, getting back to the the then. Um, I was going over to play with them all and wanted a ghillie, but I didn't want to bring a big ghillie. Um, quite like that these have knee pads. There was loads of concrete about, so I thought, yeah, I'll leave the camo on, ditch the leaf suit. So I got this and I got my EDU, wherever it is. Oh, there it is. So that's the look of the camo, and um, quite tiger stripey. And then this is my crafted version. And whenever you come away, it kind of just looks like a typical leaf suit. But actually, when you go up close, so much of it isn't crafted, which is kind of what Step was saying there. Um, so, what's the patch on the sleeve? Just caught my eye there. Dark emergency, the Germany guys. 
hours. And so I called them. And so again, there's stuff like that. Um, some people will say, oh, that really sticks out. Um, but part of it is for me is just like, oh, I'm just going out. I don't care. There, if I wanted to be 100% effective, then yes, there was certain stuff that I would do. But um, I don't, don't mind little small bits like that. Um, and the same um, like chair streak. Right. Just a comment from Darren again. Um, he loves Tiger Stripe, but he finds the patterns too small most of the time, and it does blend in one blob. I think looking at the, the Tiger Stripe, you've, as you've got it there, the macro shapes on it have got an outline, like the light tan outline. There's no... It's not like DPM where you've got big, blocky, dark, then light. It's like a, just a little board around it. I don't know whether that would yeah. affect it. So there's actually, if I can remember correctly, I think there's 11 layers. So I seen the Photoshop file mm. um, whenever I was over, and it was really interesting. They collapsed the view and then started making you know all the layers disappear. So I think there's a right, Did you layers. say you use Photoshop for that? Yeah. Photo, it's everywhere these days. Um, it's almost like an right, I couldn't, couldn't resist that one. Um, yeah, um, I, I can't really tell from the camera here, but it looks like the dark brown is, is textured from here. Yeah, it, def it definitely is. Actually, the dark brown is made up of one, two, three, four, five colors, maybe one. Yeah, so it's almost like a con camo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he loves to tiger stripes, or and that that people... is a very good assessment of it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's probably going to be my Norwich review. Uh, if you can imagine Con Camo and tiger stripes made love to each other, this is probably what it looks like. Um, so yeah, as I start to come away, it sort of works, but uh, hmm. I don't know whether it's the the tan that gives it quite a micro pattern. I don't know whether that would affect it. Obviously, we can't do 60 meter testing here, but yeah. But I've seen a, a picture of it in a pine forest, and it is incredibly effective because of the colors on it. Yeah, there, there's that guy, Pine. I think his Instagram is something. Pine, pine. Survey. Yeah, he yeah, seems to be the, doing. The picture, yeah. Yeah, he seems to be doing quite Just, a bit uh, of testing. The but drone from a, above, yeah. That's the other part of ghillie sniping or ghillie hunting or just ghillie observation or whatever that people need to remember that there's a certain amount of knowledge that you need to have in your suit. Like it, it's quite, I wouldn't say easy for me, but because I'm a photographer and I take photos of myself, I actually don't take photos of myself. Normally Catherine's pushing a buggy and she would, they would fall asleep and I'd be like, yeah. quick go and push the nappy bag aside, put my ghillie on, jump in a park, take 10 photos, take it all off and away we go. But I'm constantly reviewing photos of myself and I'm constantly um, saying, should I go here? Should I go there? And Catherine has then learnt, oh, I think you need to be here. And I go, oh, really? And then I see the photo and I go, oh. So there's times where as a kind of like gilly model, I pick the wrong area um, to hide in. And so then she she's like informing me, no, you need to go here. So that really helped with my gameplay because then I started developing this knowledge of where I can hide. So, you know, the Oakmaster looks class, um, but you know, there's some, some places in an airsoft site or in your terrain where that will look absolutely atrocious. So- The, the difficulty we're finding is, is trying to find uh... An adaptable enough camouflage that will work maybe 75 percent effective in most areas and that, that's the holy grail for all of us but when you're posing for photos uh you know if you're photoshopping your photos or whatever you'll find somewhere it works and then that's what ends up on your instagram the company's instagram or, or whatever um so yeah that's the, the challenge going forward i think for and in the instagram, uh, what i noticed with instagram was i I stopped posting photos of me like in full camouflage because then people are scrolling through and just see a picture of a 
leaf than a rock. Wood, yeah. Yeah. Whereas people do want the aggressive look and see the gun and things like that. So I actually stopped doing that. Um, and so what I started doing was the first photo would be the badass photo with like a big type of gun or whatever. The next photo that you scroll across to is um, then me hiding in situ. So you kind of know what I look like and then you need to try and find me. Um, and so that's quite good to do. Um, but going back to learning where to hide, um, a lot of people kind of started turning to the Russian oak suits because they thought they kind of worked in, in an uh, oak forest in England. Yes, it'll work extremely well. But I rarely lie down in airsoft. Um, if I've got one fern in front of me, it's two feet high. My head's like eight inch, my eye line's eight inches over. That's my sight gone. So I'm effectively a dead man. So I always try and my vision and my attack is the thing that keeps me alive the most. So I want to have as much vision as possible. So that's typically me either kneeling or standing. Um, so the big thing there is actually hiding in front of things and not behind things. If you're hiding behind them, you typically have to stick your head around that tree stump or uh, around that bush or around that fern. Whereas whenever you're hiding in front of it and you're relying on the camouflage, there's a big difference between hiding and camouflage. Hiding is, you, you know, you could be in multicam tropic or desert DPM and hiding behind a rock or hiding in a cave or in water with a straw, that's hiding. Camouflage is actually revealing yourself, but you just can't see yourself or the enemy just can't see you. So I typically try to hide in front of things. And um, so that then ditched, I, I ditched my brown suit very, very quickly because I was just like, there's nothing brown around me, no matter what way I craft this. There's going to be some type of brown shape, even if I use large green macro. So I switched to a green suit very quickly and I inked it, color mixed it and inked it. And um, there's one video that I'm really proud of. And it was my first AAP gas blowback video. And you hear Fox Green and Mania Airsoft saying, oh, Staten's just going over there. And it was a defense game. We were the last line of defense and we only had one life or two lives, one outside and one inside a bus. And I lay down with my back against brambles and was out in the open. And Mania says on the video on his head camera, where's he hiding? Like he's going to be dead after his two shots because I was using the loud gas blowback gun. And in fact, I was the only one to stay alive the whole game. Um, despite having the loud gun and it was because I didn't have a silhouette at all. Um, slow movement and masking the shots with other shots or taking out enemy that were further than the enemy that's closest to me. Um, so th yeah, it's it, knowing where to hide as well and choosing your environment. If there's a particular spot in your airsoft site that's slightly elevated, that means that you'll have ground behind you. So I would then try to mask myself in that ground. Um, as opposed to lying down. Um, so That's the, the big skill in airsoft sniping though, isn't it? It's knowing where to put yourself. If you know where to put yourself, you can wear anything you want to go sniping. And you rely on the terrain, you use the terrain to, to do the job for you. Yeah, and, and it depends on your objective, whether it's a milsim or whether, it, let's face it, most skirmishes are, even if there's a sort of team talk, it turns into P4 football. Everybody just runs at the ball. Yeah. We aren't the sport per se. Yes, we have comrades who are our teams, but everybody ends up doing their own thing. And there's very few people that use comms. I think comms wins games. Yeah. Um, there's and do also... you find as a, a sniper, you're, you're on your own more than, than anyone else? You've got to do your own thing. Um. Depend on who's on the other end of your radio. Yeah, it depends really. There, there, there are some mill sims where I am not part of a squad. I'm a one-man squad. Um, 
which I've quickly disliked, um, but they send me off by myself and they say, go and annoy the enemy as much as possible here. And it's the psychological thing where, you know, the, the good old Saving Private Ryan, you take down one of them and then you wait and you deliberately don't shoot and things like that. And you start to play havoc and you start to control the game without even shooting. Um, yeah. So there's that aspect of it as well. Um, ah. But typically on skirmishes, um, you'll typically see me at the objective, hitting the objective as quickly as possible. Um, see, and I'm, as sneakily I'm, as possible. I'm, I'm of that ilk of, you'll very, very rarely see me at an objective. My general mode, modus operandi is around the out, uh, a big flank, and I mean a big flank, and then I'm cutting off a path, a, a main route, a, a bush line, whatever it might be. So I, I'm, I'm hundreds of metres away from a, from an objective, I'm, but denial is Jack my... I'm going to bring Airsoft Jackal in. So Airsoft Jackal is from the total en other end of the... Uh, oh, yeah. Of the island. So Jackal and I live about five hours apart. Um, his terrain is possibly one of the most difficult to camouflage for. It's a pine forest, oh, okay. which is very, very dark, gray trees, brown orange needles. But yeah. wherever there's a tree missing, there's just this tropical lush fern and moss, yeah. which is bright, bright green. Um, so actually you'll see my one of my suits I specifically did just for yeah. Jackal's uh, site. Um, to match the brown pine trees, and uh, but I've also added this big patch of moss as a big macro pattern. Um, yeah, that was very effective, don't it? Yeah, and the marshals never really seen a ghillie suit before, but I think the words were, "Oh, you guys are going to get murdered out there. That'll never work." And within an hour, they were around us taking photos, laughing yeah. their balls off. <laughs> What do I, I used uh, what's the tiger? The tiger stalker. It was just yeah. a small few bits on it. Yours is a, the dark. Yeah, the it was dark darker, suit. and then I used a uh, flick tear. Yeah. For the base, which mm -hmm. is, which is very fairly effective in the dark yeah. as well. And so going back to airsoft kind of tactics of what you do, um, I played with Jackal quite a few times, and I never ever see him on the game zone. I, I don't think there's ever been a time where you and I have paired up, even though we've both been on the same team yeah. and we're very friendly with each other. Yeah. We've just got two different styles. So, yeah, yeah. Jackal, what do you do? I generally will just go go, go straight at them and then I'll say it's, if it's a skirmish, I'll either go straight at, the, straight at the, team, the other team's base and then just plant myself down and I will lie down because hmm. I do use a bike pad sometimes and I'll lie down and I'll just end up grabbing uh, whatever foliage around me, throw it over me as well, and just take pot shots mm -hmm. down in different different places, either, either that or I'll go around, go out around the outside mm -hmm. and come in, come in from the side. Yeah. I'm just, there. Uh, it's, uh, or it's just hiding, 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 lay in sight of them. <laughs> yeah, sometimes... Get up into the middle of the field and just cause havoc as they're all running down towards you. Yeah, like that was the... The last time I was down was for my birthday and we had just taken over the base, detonated a bomb and had to rescue a VIP that had to come back to our base and we only had one life at that point. And I literally sat in some brambles but faced the same way as the enemy. So they all came steaming past me, and then I ended up getting like Shoot. a ten-man <laughs> kill streak with the SSP team. Um. So, but that was more of a hide, you know. Yeah. I well, wasn't in. Last, in sight. last Sunday, not last Sunday, it was the Sunday before, and it was fairly windy. It was a fairly windy day, and everyone was uh, going around, and I just, I just decided, you know, I'm going to try a new tactic, and I just. Got up, would say maybe within forty meters of the other team, the other team's base, and I just stood up behind a tree, and then I just slowly just moved myself out, and I was just standing next to the tree, and I just started doing that, 
whether it was next to the tree and then just slowly bringing up the rifle and take it and just taking shots <laughs> and no one knew where the shots were coming from <laughs> yeah. going, oh look there's, a, there's, another, there's another tree over there and it's just going bouncing going from side to side with the wind like the last time good. we were down I, I held the right flank there was me and Huey Huey mm. uses an AG, but he was about 20 metres behind me on my left and I was up lying down over the log and every so often I lifted around and took a shot and then lowered the gun back down and you just heard the, the panic in the voices, where the fuck is he? And uh, and then one of them stand, comes out and he goes, fuck it lads, come on, we'll go and then the next thing he gets hit in the chest and the marshal's pissing himself laughing and everybody else is in panic. Where the fuck is he? And yeah, I, I, like, it's good. Yeah. Slow movement that, wins games. Yeah. What is You've it? got to be quick, quick. Slow movement wins games. You've got to be quick between your, your locations. But once you get there, if you move slowly, you get away yeah. with anything. People just aren't that switched on. People aren't. And, and yeah, you know, you, we, we kind of accept that people are there for, the vast majority, unless you're at Milsons and stuff, you know, they're they're there for a laugh and it's um you know, they're not taking it uber serious. So sometimes it's they're not as aware. They're having a laugh. Mm. So mm. Yeah. Well we uh, yeah, we typically have a laugh, but Fox Green and I Fox Green would be even worse than me. He he would be Yeah. Like he you he, you seen bored in a gilly. Yeah, when he has a video, <laughs> as Stip says, I'd probably be the fastest um, getting out, and then no. say we're 60 meters out from an objective, boom, down, or then it's stop and slow and listen and yeah. wait for them. Possibly, is there any patrols coming? Where can I go? Um, whereas Fox Green's still away off. Come on, you little fuckers. Mm. <laughs> Tell you, tell you what though, right? If you take that shot, it's it's a great discipline to take the shot and just stay still. A lot of people, as soon as the, the shot hits and the enemy players start running around, they'll move. And it's that movement that gets them seen because they're looking in your direction. If you can just be patient, sit still, trust your camouflage and just pray, you'll yeah, normally get away with it. I think I, I learned that by accident just from YouTube because you kind of rack the bolt, you pull the trigger. Mm. If you move, you you lose the impact. So you you do have to hold it there for you know yeah. a good few seconds. Get the player's reaction, the ouch, the you know or whatever. It's, it's trigger discipline. If you can wait like twenty seconds before your next shot, they've got no chance. But if you you quickly go to rack the bolt and you panic and you move out of the way, that's when things get seen. And quite often. I would be a wee a, a step further. I wouldn't even use my my bolt action. Um, like Jackal here made a shot that was eighty two point two meters or something, which was like just to beat the world record of the Italian. And that's a one jewel. Um, so we did that just for <laughs> for a eight. laugh. Yeah. Point eight of a jewel. And uh, we did that just for a laugh yeah. in a shit, in a car park in, a at the airsoft site and. Um, but typically anything under, we can hit anything up to 70 meters pretty well, um, which is fine, but we, sometimes I still just go and I'll watch them and I'll watch them and I'll watch them and I might even let them walk past me, which is quite good. Um, and then the attack. So that's even a bit of trigger discipline because you are thinking, mm. Oh, I'm filming this for YouTube. I need to rack up kills. You know, this is boring lying here. You know, and there's there's some people that really shouldn't be filming while they're sniping because they get far too excited when they've got a camera switched on. <laughs> well, I I actually say that I think everybody should film one because of the memories and will always regret those games where you you're down at the pub or you're with your mates at the, you know, and you go ah. Oh, and you, you're able to scroll back and go, you see, this is where Jim Bob did this here and I did that. And then the paro blew up in his pocket. And so I quite like that side of things. And then the other side of it is, uh, you know, this cheating idea of people not calling hits and calling hits. All right, well, let's watch the cameras. Oh, no, there's a, no. a great video out there. My local site used to have a kill house. Um, and there's a video of one lad who eliminated the entire kill house in one run on camera. 
about 20 of us inside. When you watch everyone else's cameras that are in there, we all shot him. But he didn't take it because he's too busy filming and, and editing it and making it look good. I'm not going to name him, Nathan, but yeah. <laughs> nice. I'm going straight on. Yeah. Um, I'll send you a link. Um, but yeah, but people do play the cameras. I think the most relaxed I ever got at a game it was actually pulled down my face shield and I was started smoking in between shaking shots. <laughs> and I've been at a site with an absolute bitch of a hangover and, and just fall asleep. Um, Good work. But that, you know, sniper birds. Andy, I didn't, I didn't Andy, I've got a question. Go on. Yeah, I've done lots of things on airsoft sites. Um, no, Andy, on. did we have other stuff to talk about? Because my head's hurt and, and I don't know what time we're on. Um, we're, we're on five to ten, so so we're, we're, we're getting on for time to go because it's a school night. Um, I've got one thing, but I think, Staten, you've kind of covered it. I, for, for those in chat that haven't seen it, I kind of have this nine point um quick nine guide point dual VSR. no th this kind of nine point um i don't want to use the word guide because it isn't a guide but um simplifying the world of designing a suit based on a bdu of find a decent pattern get some cotton i recommend halo screen um and then I just say, follow the pattern. Um, I think what you're talking about with... I, I really like your idea of drawing on with chalk. That I, I've never heard somebody say that. that. That's quite a nice way of just just make a pattern and put it on and, and see what happens. I mean, and that's... Yeah, it really forces you not to do the, the dotted green. Um, obviously, this yeah. is a winter suit, so there is only little sprouts of green. Yeah. Um, but uh, for the, the bigger kind of suits uh, or the more like sort of macro pattern suits that you need, um, definitely it keeps you within that guideline. Because yeah, like also it. a lot of time, the best type of gillian would be, you know, getting a mannequin that's kind of like this or, you know, some sort of mannequin as opposed to it lying flat because you typically craft in lines then as well. Yeah. There's, there's one big thing I have about... Um... When I try and design stuff, I try and design my camouflage in 3D. So you'll you'll see lots of, and I'm guilty, and I've been guilty of this. You know, you take a pair of trousers or a jacket or whatever it is, and you throw it onto onto the ground in front of you. And yeah, it gives you it gives you a fundamental idea of does it work. But going back to what you're talking about, where you get your missus to take a picture of you, because then. It, you get some depth of field, you get an understanding of, well, how does how does that react on a human being as opposed to just laid on, on the ground? So I've got a, a boonie hat throwing video and, and that gives some of that. It's only a bit of height, but what I use the boonie hat for is, is proof of concept, basically. So a small boonie hat takes me 15, 20 minutes just to bang a load of stuff on. I throw it on the ground. Does it work? Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. Chop and change and then apply on a bigger scale. So that's kind of the way I try to do the work that I do. Um, and I just, yeah. And then, but then I've also got, um, I've got a Viper assault vest, which again is a bit bigger so I can scale, but again, it's not flat. It's got the, 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 the pouches are at a different angle. So it gives you some, when, you, when you're in person rather than just on a picture, it gives you some 3D and it gives you an idea of how that pattern reacts to a shape rather mm. than just a flat piece of fabric on the ground. So um, that's something I've been trying to work on over the last two, three years or so. So, But I really and like that so, yeah. chalk and, and see what yeah. it is. It's nice and um, if, you're, if you're not going to be lying down loads, don't craft your yeah. suit to the forest floor. Yeah. Um, what I do is I tend to lift it up. Um, I remember uh, doing a video like a, a quick Instagram video, which had like sort of the, the Russian brown leaf suit, but my stalker alder colors were actually hung up in the background. And the idea is you don't see it. And I'm talking about the forest and why. Okay. And I show a video of me lying down in my field of view. And I say, this is why I don't lie down, but I stand up. 
and then I stand up and I'm walking towards the suit and then it's only whenever I start the parallax I move around the suit where the shape you suddenly yeah. twig on to the alder. So um yeah so if you you know if you're gonna be sitting up most of the time and there's not hills behind you um I typically try to craft to you know the height that I'm gonna be at as well. So that's the, the other way thing. So that's typically that's why I chose DPM bottoms, but I'm not too sure if I would use a DPM jacket on top. I might still use, you know, something like bright green. I, I have this really good idea. This is my jacket I'm working on. It's a little progress. Um, so there's a DPM. So for prone, the back will be dead stuff for lying on the floor. The front of it is going to be mostly green. So if I'm going, if I'm kneeling or if I'm standing up, the green will match the background behind me. If I want to go flat, it should hopefully match in the floor when I get it done. Yeah. I think uh, Fox Green does that. Um, he's got a really good photo on Instagram or maybe it's a video that he done. But that was his philosophy as well. He plays in a a site that has that kind of brown floor but huge rhododendrons, which are dark green. So hit the back of his suit is brown but the front of it's kind of more green so that's a very very good point i haven't done it yet um but uh... the, the, the only downside to that is depending on so a lot of the sites that we play at near where i live is that the game area it's not always a linear yeah yeah it, you've got 360 attack yeah. yeah you've got you've got points that you end up you've got respawn points that will be behind the enemy or mm. off to a side, so I'm not sure that I'd work where I play. But yeah, I think the principle yeah. is relatively sound. If you play that linear style, like, again, it depends on your on your play style and the way the game works as well. I, again, like Milsim, perhaps not. I don't know. Mm. It's cool. So, um, Testing. Uh, finishing off. Yeah, these are the uh, colors. Going back to it, these are all just pre-bought, pre-dyed cotton and um, touching on a wee bit of value where the value comes in. Um, for me, as a dad of two and um, very busy schedule, you know, we with Athena running the shop as well, you know, as full-time parents, multiple businesses, I don't have a lot of time. So my, my time with my kids is like a million pounds an hour. Um, so I'm happy to buy a pre-dyed or even wear the real kind of cheap fabrics are, it's pretty darn close. I'd be happy enough to, to buy this really cheap. And it's like, I don't know, like four pounds a meter, yeah, which would expensive. cover loads. Um, there are people that then custom stuff. And I used to custom hand paint leaves. That's man hours. And as soon as you introduce man hours or woman hours or non-binary hours, things just go sky high yeah. um, and it's the same as craft shops if you go into a craft shop you'll see birthday cards that are like almost 10 pounds and you go into the local supermarket and asda is doing them for like 29p and you're like oh where's the value in that and it's just like well there's been one person like super gluing little gems and doing this and doing that and it's the same as ghillie crafting the minute you introduce someone who's pretty darn good at what to do and is going to get the colors right, you know, get everything right, that's going to ramp up the costs. Yep. So, yeah, I'm all for the cheap stuff that you can buy. And I constantly recommend taupe on eBay. It's really good. Buy three meters of that, cut it into meter lengths or 0.75 meter lengths, boil up a, a pot of tea and chuck some in wait 15 minutes, chuck the next batch in, wait 15 minutes, chuck the next batch in, but this time add coffee, next time add more coffee. You'll then have four or five, you'll have the original taupe, but you'll then have four different shades of brown yeah. and gray with the coffee and tea. That's a very, very cheap way. The cotton's like four pounds, the tea bags are maybe three pounds, whatever it is nowadays, and then your gas and your water for boiling. But most importantly, your time, for doing that. Um, it, this leads really nicely into what I was going to do for my little section of the live show that we've forgotten about. Um, before I do, if anyone's got any questions, please fire them away in the chat. Yeah. Um, what I would like to do 
with you know potentially the three of us and, and anyone else we can get on would be to go through how to build a ghillie from the ground up expensive option versus cheap option just to go through all the options available what you can do what you should be doing what you shouldn't be doing and try and put a series together because one of the questions we get most often all three of us will get these questions constantly on social media how do i build a ghillie i know there's guides out there but i don't think a lot of people are keen on reading um maybe we can do just a, a video tutorial from the ground up what to look at what to consider and how to build that and you're in uh, just say yes on that yeah i'm i'm all up for that and on that uh i have been talking to someone in the ghillie crafting world who would be world class at that and military stuff about creating a video um where you'll be able to download and watch that video and it will be a step-by-step -step thing um, it's like a guitar video or anything like that thing there will be a cost involved the production's yeah. going to be as high as possible there'll be different locations around europe and possibly further afield that's going to cost money to do it so there will be a little bit of a cost involved in that um but definitely there is lots of free information out there and i'll be providing free information as well um i don't think well, I, mean, people... I wasn't going to go to new zealand or anything but i was thinking i could sit in the room here and we could just talk about uh bases theories okay. ideas what you've got on your rail um you know the, the techniques and materials involved if you can get the theory into your head you're halfway there yeah. you know and then you can probably add a, a lot of polish with your you know your, your video guide from the caribbean or whatever it is that you're doing <laughs> And yeah, none none of the three of us are very precious with information. Um, feel free to reach out. Oh God, no! At any time, and we'll give you either a very sarcastic answer from Step or a very funny one from me, or probably the, the most acceptable answer from Andy. But uh, yeah, we are. We it are it depends who it is. We we pick the right one for the right answer. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Or depending on the time of day, like you won't get step before one thirty in no. in the afternoon. Um, <laughs> You're probably better off asking before one thirty in the afternoon before I get started. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that'll be really good, guys. Um. Everything's pretty cheap. Like the cotton's cheap, the raffi is cheap. That's mm. the knowledge then that you need for that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And like like um, we've talked about um macro patterns especially and and how to multi macro pattern. If you were building and you know just mentioned the materials that I would use, you've got an option between cotton and nano screen. You've got a cheap option and you've got a more expensive option. But we can go through all that. We can talk about it all. We can give think, people yeah, the answers. The the interesting thing is also scenarios or locations. Um, mm. I know a lot of people go straight for like sort of KMCS brown or whatever that style of suit, but um, they may play in green farmland like. A lot of us over here, Jackal plays in a pine field or a pine uh, forest. Um, so maybe I'll continue with my DPM. running the show <laughs> we need him he presses buttons okay. um yeah so, some sites you get lucky where i'm not doing anything um 
there's sometimes you get lucky where it is just one terrain throughout but i think for most airsoft sites you've got at least two different environments to consider i don't yeah. know what it's like where, where you play what sites you're at um a lot of mine are i think we lost the feed there but uh a lot of mine are kind of farmland so you'll get brambles mm. you'll get a bit of what i call woodland as opposed to forest um so woodland would be those kind of brambles, bluebells, you know, very, very few fern. There was a, a site up north on a region that it closed on, but it was literally just brown leaves and green fern. And it was so easy to play in. It was mm. so easy to camouflage in. Um, I, I, like, I literally used my brown suit and stuck fern in me. And that was me done. And yeah. the the marshals were looking for me, and oh, it, it was brilliant. It it was it was just like oh, this is so easy to do. And um, whereas as you say, one minute you're in grassland, the next minute you're in brambles, the next minute you're in a dark forest. You know, it can. I, I think your only hope at that point is to use your your cover to try and hide yourself if your daily suit's not. Gonna Um, so the the blending then is like, do you look exactly like the terrain? Um, so if you imagine there's a, a meadow and there's a brown log running through it, the brown log obviously stands out quite a bit, but it blends in with the scene. Yeah, so true. A few things like that. So if you, one of my phrases that I use for everybody is get your colors right and keep it simple. Um, mm. And typically, if your colors are right with nature, you will kind of fit in to the scene. Um, if you're still, if you aren't moving, of course. Um, so yeah, Andy, are we losing the the feed? Discord keeps kicking off, so um, it's up and down. We're back now. So okay, so right. I was just chatting to Stan. Um, yeah, it's it's as so long as you don't look like a player. Essentially. Yeah, um, I yeah. do know. Like, maybe we'll we'll be as Step was saying, we'll be doing more of these on how to build, uh, how to build ghillie suits. And maybe my section, like I'm not a camouflage expert, but one of the things that I could be deemed as an expert is colors. So I'll maybe go into how to replicate certain colors um, mm -hmm. and how to replicate nature. Um, a wee bit. I think that would be quite helpful for people. I know a lot of people pick green, green uh, fabric for leaves, but leaves, technically under the spectrum of things, are yellow. They aren't green, and I'll explain all that in great boring detail as quickly as possible on another live stream. Um, but I'll maybe even do a few wee experiments and do it live. Um, show you how I get my colors um, and bring up a sort of spectrum of how to get those colors. Um, I, no I mean, that could be a section. If, if we were doing it in the Giddy Crafters group, um, we could maybe start with bases, how to choose a base, how to, you know, what to look for, what to not, what works, what doesn't. Do a section, like you say, on how to get the, the colors correct, how to you know, mimic nature on, or however you want to put it. And then mm -hmm. we go on to, to how to assemble things. And that would yeah, be quite a series, I think. Have the least experience of um, compared to you guys. So, um, yeah, I'll follow your lead after that. I mean, it's not experience. We are just old. There's no getting away from that. <laughs> hey, he's the old one here, not me. I'm young. Well, I'm fresh, pay, fresh faced. I, I know how old he is now, so I, yeah, I can't say I'm not the oldest. Yeah. Um, it's quarter past ten. It's been a thoroughly enjoyable conversation. I've had a, enjoyed listening oh. a lot because you've it's it's so so me and Stip talk a lot about this stuff and we've got some fairly similar ideas on on the way it works. It's really nice hearing somebody else who who you be, one thing I found really interesting was when you, when you said um, because you film you shoot and you wait because you want to fo you want to follow that BB onto its target, but actually the knock on effect of that is. You don't move. 
Mm, and that's probably yeah. so. It's 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 interesting little little nuggets that you you take from little different nuggets. people who play in in who play the game in a different way almost. Um, yeah. So yeah, you pick stuff and like the the chalk. It's um, yeah a, a different point of view from you know a different uh, over, over the water. You know you're not far away, but you know it's different the way the, the way things are done. So it's really it's interesting to 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 get another perspective. Um, yeah, if you're kind of brought up in one kind of group, you're told how to do things. Yeah. But that doesn't work. In, as Step says, there's an equation. And if mm. you get the equation right, you'll be able to work out any sum you want. Yeah. So I kind of have a bit of an equation in my head of how to, how to camouflage or whatever a bit. But as I say, I'm, I'm not clued up in it at all um, to a professional level. But uh, yeah, there's... There's stupid stuff, you know. We could go to a seamstress and talk to a seamstress about what we do, and then she would probably go, or he would probably go, or non-binary would probably go. Um, yeah, do it. Have you ever tried this? Or, yeah. you know, I know someone put in the Gilly Crafters uh, group uh, the little roller that actually cuts in zigzags. Yeah. And so it was a simple thing. Um, whether it's really, really effective or not, you know, is another thing. Would you see it outside? You know three meters i'm not so sure but it's cool that people are doing things like that and we aren't just relying on like a group of three or four people to teach yeah. us everything and that's the way you know yeah. so um but yeah we are going to do more of these yeah yeah definitely definitely um on on that note um oh, hang on i've only done page one i've got four oh, pages hell. you've got four pages that's a lot of stuff. Oh, we'll do it another time Let's it's quarter past ten. Sorry, Stip. We've uh, we've done our standard. Yeah. We've gone that way. Um, I'm a crap host uh, in terms of keeping us on track. I've quite enjoyed sitting here looking at the word poo on statins. Have you? The word poo? Uh, what? Poo. Where's? I don't know. Where are you? Are you on? Are you online or not? Thank you. Uh, oh, I see. About... Sorry. Yeah. 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 Poo. I'm, I'm looking at. I'm, I'm reading from top to bottom. So. I hadn't noticed that. Well done. Just kept me going all night. <laughs> that and a, and a couple of cans of Anstel. Um, uh, on the on the topic of live streams, um, Stip and I will be doing one in the not too distant future with um, the lovely uh, Dan Toon, who is in the chat this evening. Um, there is a big date coming up um, in the diary that people that I hadn't realised. Um, for those who have been around, like me and Stip and a few others, um, there was a chap in the Airsoft Sniper Forum, before Facebook was really a thing in the groups, there was a chap called One Ton. Lots of people will know his name. If you don't know his name, One Ton kind of created the original VSR 10 upgrading Bible. Um, it's very DIY. Um, lots of the products that you see on the market these days kind of emanate from that era um, and that post or one of the posts is 10 years old on the 29th of December so um, myself, Stip and Dan will be doing a live stream in the not somewhere around the 29th of December date, official date to be decided but to mark the 10 year anniversary and to really consider kind of what's out there, how it's changed what it looks like so um we will definitely be doing that, and I'm sure Staten will will come and have another chat one day about about how you're doing things and 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 and, and what else is going on in the in the camouflage world. So, um, when the the ten year anniversary was the 29th of December, wasn't it? It was, yeah, 29th of December. I don't know what actual day. I remember that the is. day well. Um, we'll do that as a New Year's special then, and because yeah. I want to keep going with Gillies because uh, we've had a lot of interesting chat tonight. Yeah. A lot of good info from Stan. So on that we'll note, on that. Uh, no, we're um, not finished yet. Shut up. I'm, we're not finished yet because I'm going to do one thing. You're going to have to wait for, for next time to do your stuff. Now, no, so. it's questions. Well, this is where I'm going. So I'm, when I look over here, I'm looking at the questions. If anybody's got any questions, put them in in the chat now. We'll we'll, we'll hang around for two or three minutes, see what comes through, um, and we'll go from there. But Jimmy says maybe, he wants more. Maybe we'll um, for the next. Yeah, as I say, I've got the DPM, so I'll maybe show off 
the continuation of that or yeah, something. That'd be good. Um, uh, yeah, if there's anything else, I'll do the maybe color dyeing and things like that there live. Um, I think color dyeing that that would be quite cool. So, yeah, I, I, I think, think uh, yeah. Once we uh, once we have a few of these under our belt, we could maybe do a uh, um put a budget of like 30 pounds including uniform ghillie bills and each of the three of us do it um and we'll try and pick a different area that that ghillie suit will work in um be because i think that that would be a wealth of knowledge and see how we do it um, yeah you uh, have to go yeah. outside you can take your beer with Maybe. you it's fine we can do it. Uh, we can do it in in here, but we can do uh, photos. We'll make sure that the the photo thing is working, and um, yes, we'll show the suit up close because obviously the suit up close looks kind of weird and nothing like how it looks whenever you're ten meters away from it yeah. in an airsoft field. But we'll maybe get some uh, photos, and uh, yeah, it'll be like Top Gear. Yeah. Only, yes. The best, the best ghillie, the best ghillie build. We've got thirty I like pounds. It. I um, like it. We need a snappy title. Star, star in a reasonably priced ghillie, but I've, I've that... got one. I've already done all this. It's fine. Point stretcher ghillie suits. <laughs> <laughs> As the ghillie suits. Yeah. Yeah, that that'll be another one. Can can you go to a supermarket and get everything you need for a ghillie suit? No. no. Yes. No. P potato sacks. No, I'm not what, talking what about... What does your soup market sell? Uh, well, supermarket, I would get uh, potato oh sacks. Potato hessian sacks. I would go to the food coloring to get my colors. Um, yeah, I would go to the t-shirts. and yeah. yeah, I'm sure there's lots of stuff. You bet I'm, I'm... With 30 quid? I'm just saying, imagine going to a, a super... A, a supermarket and getting some Stella. <laughs> yeah, and then I'd have loads of great ideas, and it would what, work. What, yeah, like drinks twenty nine pounds of his. Yes, and only has a pound left. <laughs> <laughs> it's like... it a bag be of the best ever because he he just find himself a little hole with his last can of Amstel, and he'd be asleep somewhere. Yeah. Pissed he would and... go to his kitchen and get a black bin liner and stick like his <laughs> empty beer tins to it and go, yeah, this is yeah. Great. It's an urban yeah. ghillie. <laughs> this is like, this is where I puke. What I did was a PVA glue, a black bin liner, and then puked on it. So, uh, yeah. There'll be no, a recycling bin out the back and I'll just be in there in a bin bag and that'll do. No urban ghillies, Stip. <laughs> mm. Thanks will be deducted for beer tokens. Um... It's going for oh, yeah. more. There's none there. Stip. It's now is the time to stop. <laughs> Here, Evil Athena's in the house, apparently. Yeah, she is. She has been since the start. Oh, really? Mm. Yeah. Jeez. She oh, says you're allowed to do more videos. She, she says you're in massive yeah. trouble. Um, Jeez. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she so, doesn't. Uh, what does it say? Cheap ghillie results are judged via hide and seek. Yeah. Well, the problem, you know what we would need, Andy? Andy, we need a site where we could all meet up yeah. and do something. We do. Say, I have the ability to do multi-cameras outside um, and do a live stream from a forest or something. So we'll have to arrange that. That could be the grand finale. I like It'll it. It'll be like Eurovision song contest, only for ghillie suits. <laughs> unless, unless, unless transvestites. Um, not that I know, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Is there any questions through? Um, let's have a look. Um, there was one about when are you coming to the UK? I've seen that you've got a bit of a. This is for you, uh, Stan. Yeah. I was going to say we're already in the UK. Well, yeah, we're already here, so it's not. Or, I was an hour ago. Well, technically, I'm still in the UK. Well, well. You, when are you actually yeah. coming to the real UK? In the United Kingdom, but not Great Britain. Is that right? Um, when am I coming to the UK? Uh, February, 
library unless I can get to Scotland beforehand. Is that where, where are you going in? Where are you going in? I want, to, I want to go to Section Eight, and there's an Airbnb called Gilly's Cottage. Oh, uh, that's quite near there, and it's unreal. So I think we're going to bring the kids and stay there and invite whoever wants to come, and because there's plenty of beds at it. It's I think it's a nine bedroom place. So um, there's Section Eight, but the problem is. For me to make it kind of valuable, there's that word again. I need to try and fit a lot in each time I go somewhere. Yeah. So when is, when you say valuable and fitting a lot in, do you mean like a weekend at one site? Um, well, the problem is that Section Eight only do Sundays. Players of War only do Sundays, so I need a Saturday game, preferably with a Sunday game, and then get home Sunday night or Monday. So, oh. We'll be in touch. It's, it's almost like we've got something in the planning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It might um, be. But yes, we will be back in the UK soon. We'll be in the UK. We will be Spain, Netherlands, Germany. And that's all I've kind of arranged so far. I want to get to Brazil big time. Brazil? There's a, have you, do you follow Fuziero Sniper? No. no, he's got like 600,000 subscribers, but wow. he's he's got a ghillie suit and he's across the water. So there's no halo screen. There's no kind of Russian suits. There's no, it's, it's a totally different style of making ghillies. Um, yeah. And uh, it's really refreshing. Um, so he's invited me over there quite a few times. So uh, yeah, or, I definitely want to fit in there and create a big thumbnail with an anaconda attacks me. During their assault, but actually, it's really just a bug comes into the I hotel room. You know? I think you've got to put "try not to laugh" at the end of it as well. With a big red eye. Photoshop, Photoshop it, just blur it slightly. It'll work. Nice. Well, yeah, um, I could probably do all that there, and uh, hopefully get to Brazil. That'd be a big one. Um, yeah, you're not wrong. Bloody hell, that's, that's quite the that's quite it's, the distance. We we can't uh, compete with that. Well, we, well, the problem the problem is. Or the good thing is that because I'm self-employed and because I do this kind of for a living, it means that I can look ahead on Skyscanner and just go, hey, there's cheap flights that weekend. I'm going to go, go, you know. So we'll, I'll be in touch with the two of you. And, like, technology is great. We can certainly do the forest thing over in England yeah. somewhere. Um, and, yeah, if you're near Liverpool, perhaps, if I'm only a foot passenger, you could give a lonely... Trumpy, wannabe, gilly sniper, a lift somewhere. I'm sure we could sort that out. It's uh, yes. Yeah, I mean, it depends how many people you've got there. You might be able to bring a bus. Um. Yeah. Well, we te we typically bring a bus. Um, there we go. Yes. For NAF and things like that, we definitely. Uh, there's loads of us. Jackal came over to NAF as well, and uh, yeah, but uh, the problem is that I get to go away airsoft and more than them, so. Quite lucky. Yeah. We'll, we'll sort something. Anyway. Fab. I, I don't think there are any other significant questions um, yeah. with the exception of that one. So unless you chaps have any other burning... Th I know, Stip, you've got your, your, your project, Gilly, big Gilly, blah, blah, blah. Words. When's, when's the next one? When can we fit the next one in? Is the it's next like this one Joe Biden. Uh, when's the next one? That's a very good question. I don't know is the answer to that one. A um, couple of weeks? Yeah. Same time, Tuesdays or Wednesdays? TBC. Hey, well, see what happens. Yeah. We'll, see what we'll, the schedule's like. We're, we Between the three of us, four of us, um, we'll have a chat and, and we'll we'll put another little banner thing up so people know as and when we're going to be doing something. So. Mm -hmm. um, well, it has been an absolute pleasure. Fabulous. Right. I need a piss. <laughs> with that thank you very much everybody nice to see you all um it's been quite a lot and some different faces so nice to see you and we will see you all again another day bye bye